Oh, my sweet Kale, our mistress. I must, my lady, I must protect her. <laughs> but then you still have these people out there who just, they, you know, the K6 Jigster Bros. They they won't shut the hell up. They're a completely <laughs> vocal crowd. Okay, let's let's do this. Let's have fun on the end of this episode. <laughs> Which contingency of motorcyclist do you think is the most annoying simp? Spike, let me ask you a question. Have you ever met someone who seemingly out of nowhere, they just decide to start telling you how amazing their motorcycle is? Oh, so you mean like a motorcyclist? Yeah, yeah, just like a regular motorcyclist. I thought you were going to say like me, and I, I thought that was an easy, an easy layup <laughs> I gave to you. Um, <laughs> no, man, every single motorcyclist will not shut the hell up about their motorcycle. You no. do it, I do it, everybody yeah. does it. You know, Josh doesn't do it much, and maybe that's because he only owns <laughs> bikes. Who knows? Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, you get him talking, he'll talk about his bikes all afternoon. That is true. He, he has a little more self-awareness than we do to, like, <laughs> if he gets asked, he'll start talking about it. But I wanted to talk today about bike simping. I think it's a cool topic. Um, I think a lot of people do it. I think there's the right way to do it, I guess, the wrong way to do it. I feel like everyone does it, you know what I mean? Um <laughs> And what better bike to do it on than this bike that I will, out of nowhere, just simp for. Because I think this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> oh, man. We use that expression so much. Whoever invented sliced bread, they must just be rolling in it, dude. They got royalties in it all day from that expression. Um, you've heard me at the shop just kind of apropos of nothing start talking about this bike, right? Yes. Give the people at home what that sounds like. What, what do I do? <laughs> uh, it's mostly just like, oh my god, the suspension is so good, and, and to try to just the triple so delicious, and the throttle feel. Oh no, the throttle feels. So, you have to, dude. You have to ride it, and you got to. You really got to understand it, man. You don't. You don't. I can tell you what it's like, but you, you just until you open the throttle, you're not gonna get it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty accurate. Um, <laughs> and I would say when we're at the shop and all of a sudden, well, your KTM has been in the shop for six months now, so I've gotten a break from it, thank God. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but we do have the Harley in the shop now. We do have the Harley now, and you and the Pan Am is a love affair like no other. Uh, it's all the time about, the, oh, the Pan Am's power is so good. Oh, it'll just go over anything. Oh, my God, the Pan Am's so great. <laughs> But then it's funny because that's the whole basis of the channel is like someone else can ride the same motorcycle and then be like, yeah, it's all right. You know, it's okay. Or, you know, whatever. And people get so up in arms about that. You know, like I remember we mm -hmm. did the Vulcan 650 video and uh, people were just like, how could you not think it's amazing? I think it's amazing. And, you know, I just, I feel like just because you love something doesn't mean that someone else is going to love something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And there might be, you might be out there thinking my bike is a universal truth. <laughs> but I just don't yeah, think there no. are universal motorcycles, really. Except the SB650. Yeah, I suppose. I think that's the one that most people are like, yeah, it's pretty good. But that's all it ever is, SB650, boys. It's just pretty damn good. That's it. It's not amazing. <sighs> nothing great. But man, uh, there's nothing quite like that classic inline four sound, is there? <laughs> no, except, you know, <laughs> triple cylinder beauty. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so much more comfortable. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'm telling you, it's a 10 out of 10. It's a masterpiece motorcycle. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Uh, this is going to be 12 to 15 minutes of pure simping. <laughs> I, I will give it to you. Man, we've been riding these bikes. We've been squidding hard on these two this morning. And there is just something about that Triumph that is quite special indeed. Yeah. I think it's a really, really special motorcycle. Um, I think it just kind of hits the mark in so many ways. It's got the looks. It's got the right ergos for kind of everyday use. It absolutely railed around the racetrack. It feels great to ride. I don't really know what else I could really want except for a TFT that doesn't run at 14 frames per second. That'd be nice. But, I mean, so it's easy to simp for a bike that's just that put together. You know, that's a $25,000 motorcycle. Yeah. But then you still have these people out there who just, they, you know, the K6 Jigster Bros. They they won't shut the hell up. They're a completely <laughs> vocal crowd. Yes, yes, they are. Um, it's interesting because it's kind of like, you remember that Chad meme where it's like the KLR 650 people where it's like, your bike sucks, and they just say, I know. Uh huh. Um, I think there's also that element of it, too, where when a bike is really kind of not many people like it, those who do own it start to simp more for it because they feel like they need to defend it. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, there is there is that sort of saber rattling, uh, white knight protect the mistress sort of situation going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's when I never thought about it that way. It's like, oh, my sweet Kale, our mistress, I must, my lady, I must protect her. <laughs> but, you know, I also think that there is some fun in that, that kind of crowd of motorcyclists that realize that their motorcycle's pretty crap for what it is. Yes. But they can still enjoy it, you know? Yes. I feel like I DRZ think... people are like that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an abominable motorcycle. But it's still a lot of fun. Yep. Still works. Yeah, I think there's a difference between, like, I think sportster people, for example, right? Most of them are completely self-aware, and they're just like, yeah, this bike isn't the greatest thing ever, but we love it, and we love it for what it is, and we're going to enjoy it for what it is. But then some of those folks are a little pie in the sky about their expectations with their bike. They're like, no, bro, like, my sportster has Olins in the back. That makes it a race bike now. It handles so good. And I'm like, buddy, it's no, an it iron doesn't. cradle frame. <laughs> like, it's never going to be a race bike. <laughs> yeah, I think the the right level of just bike sympathitude is when you've realized what your motorcycle is good at and you just can have fun with it. Yes. And be like, this, you can tell somebody without a bunch of crazy hyperbole why you enjoy your motorcycle and why it's fun and why it was the right choice for you. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's really important to pick the right bike for you and to enjoy it and to not really worry about other bikes or other motorcyclists. Because I think that's something we see a lot on our Discord, for example, is people who have bought a particular motorcycle and then they keep kind of window shopping and wondering what if, you know? They buy a, yeah. a CV650R and they're like, oh, but, but what if I did wait for that RS660 and what if I did do this and what if I did do that? It's like, as soon as you pick a bike, man, just ride it, enjoy it, have fun. Don't don't continue the, the spec sheet warrior analysis and, you know, trying to figure out what bike is right for you. Just get the bike and have fun with it. And, you know, you know, at, at every riding group, you're going to have people making fun of you. But that's part of the fun, too, you know. Like, if you got a riding group with a guy who never shuts up about KTM, you got another guy who never shuts up about his Suzuki, um, that's, that's part of the fun, you know. Yeah, and it, you're never going to escape that. People know. People always like to talk about their motorcycle, and they don't like to listen to you about yours. Yes. <laughs> like, that's that's the nature of being a motorcyclist that especially beginners will come to realize. Yes, yes. Because chances are you're going to start on a Ninja 400, an R3, a yep. Duke 390, a really known platform that everybody's like, yeah, no, it's like, it's like a Civic. It's fine. Yep. It works. Yep. But it's not cool, you know? And and to you, the the beginner out there, it's the coolest thing in the world. Because you're out on two wheels and you're having fun and you're revving it out. But to everybody else, it's just kind of common a garden. Yeah, and you're bastardizing it with lights and stickers and rim tape and all the other crap that you beginner riders do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. But if I see one more blacked out windshield, I'm gonna have a, 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 a hissy fit. I'm not kidding. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a tantrum, I'm gonna start getting on the floor and screaming. Because I've had just about enough with the black windscreen, guys. You can't see when you go full tuck. It doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah, he has not stopped talking about the black <laughs> windscreen on this Jixxer all morning. Because <laughs> I went full throttle on the highway, and I was like, okay, I put my blindfolds on, and I'm holding a 175 horsepower wide open. Okay, <laughs> sure. But, yeah, you can definitely, if, here's the thing. If you're always just, like, riding on your own, and you're just, like, kind of getting lost in the sauce of the simping of your own motorcycle, um... You know, I think that's a bad thing. I think you need to broaden your horizons, try some other bikes, ride with some other people who will let you ride their bikes and stuff like that so that you can maybe start to appreciate other bikes too. Um, mm -hmm. I remember me, for example, when I was kind of starting out and I had my Daytona, I thought that no other sport bike could ever compare to the Daytona. I was like, no, it is literally the perfect sport bike. I've, I've chosen it, and clearly because I chose it, it must be the best, you know, that confirmation <laughs> bias thing. Yep. And uh, the more you ride, the more you come to appreciate how every bike offers you something a little bit different. I'm thinking back to the, the 1098, man. God, what a great motorcycle, you know? And it's yeah. so different from the Daytona, but I still thought it was a fantastic motorcycle. And that, that I think, is the kind of evolved state of a motorcyclist, is when you can ride a bike and you can appreciate it for what it is and find something cool about it, you know? Mm-hmm. 
when you can when you can get on a motorcycle and simp for it even if it's not your own oh yeah that's good just like this one it's a giveaway bike <laughs> but i won't stop simping for it baby <laughs> It's just because it's the Daytona that you want them to make again. <laughs> it is. It's very close to it. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, it's so sweet. I look down the cockpit. I see the white and the carbon fiber. It just takes me back. It's great. <laughs> There's definitely that, too. Like, whatever bike you start on is going to be, like, your reference point for all of your other motorcycles in the future, too. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I've seen a lot of guys on our Discord server who, I guess, <laughs> they've gotten, like, sport bike secondhand cancer from me on there. <laughs> And they start, <laughs> they started out on cruisers, and then uh, you know they go out and try like an SV650, and they're like, oh my god, it's so nimble, it handles like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'm like, buddy, it's an SV650, it's not like that great. But their <laughs> reference point is like, you know, some some cruiser or something like that, and that really kind of warps your perception. What do you think about that? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I started out on. Harleys. I started out on the Street 750, and then I got the Street Rod, yeah. and then I got my first sport bike in the 919, and I was like, oh, oh man, motorcycles <laughs> are fast. <laughs> um, but, you know, y you still have that comfort zone where, like, I like looking down and seeing Harley-Davidson on the dashboard, because it's just like, oh, I'm home. This is, this is where I come from. Yeah. Yeah, there definitely there is, is that kind of nostalgia and home sense of it, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also kind of interesting when you see people who have never ridden a motorcycle and yet they simp for it anyway. Yes, you know, that is interesting. That is really peculiar to me because even if you've never ridden a motorcycle like whatever, like say you've ridden a Ninja 400 but you've had a Gixxer 1000 on your wallpaper for a long time on your computer, you're still gonna simp for it anyway. Um, which, God, no, stop doing the thing, Jixer, go. Thank you. <laughs> go, Jixer. <laughs> um, like, people are gonna simp for motorcycles that they've never ridden or even, like, necessarily been around, which is so weird to me. Yeah, that's always really weird where they just have like a sense of what the bike's supposed to be like and then they just start simping for it online and in all these other places. I see this a lot with the Yamaha R bikes. Um, I don't know why they have like such a diehard contingency. Uh, they're just like, yeah, this is the best leader bike. It sounds amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, have you ever ridden one? They're like, no. I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's a deeply flawed motorcycle for like a daily. So I don't know why you think it's like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Do you think that's down to the fact that they see people like us riding motorcycles constantly and they they think that they've gotten that vicarious understanding of what the bike's all about? Yes. Yeah, that's something I want to implore to you guys if you've made it this far in the video is don't just listen to what people say online. Go and ride these bikes yourself because you might have a totally different impression on them. And that's the thing I was telling you guys, you know, like you don't want to just watch our videos and form an opinion on a motorcycle. Uh, go and ride the bikes because your reference points may be totally different than our own. Um, like, for example, the Pan America videos, uh, you know, Spite has a different reference point, owning a KLR and actually being an adventure bike guy. I have a different reference point, having dabbled a little bit in adventure riding and having a dual sport and stuff. Um, and a lot of comments on those videos were like, Oh, like, you know, I think the Pan Am's amazing. I think you just got it all wrong. And it's like, well, maybe you think it's amazing because you've only ever ridden Harleys, you know? And then, yeah, of course it's amazing. It makes a ton of power. It feels great. But all about those reference points. Yeah, I mean, but nothing's going to be actual first-hand experience. Oh, this bike's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's so much fun with it on track. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I, this needs to be uncut and in the vlog. You need to experience what I'm experiencing, people at home. Spite has to, like, literally live through this every week with me. <laughs> Just, it's so skinny and it flicks over so nice. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> And honestly, guys, we cut out a lot of our own, like, personal bias simping on the channel to try to keep it more objective because if we both didn't cut that stuff out, oh, my God, people would give us so much grief. Oh, the vlogs would also be 
like <laughs> infinitely longer because we will just sit and get on tangents and oh my god talk they, about they'd stuff be that unwatchable. no one... they'd be unwatchable <laughs> honestly <laughs> People think you're living with videos are long. If you had it your way, you'd do a two-hour seminar on why the Pan America is the greatest motorcycle ever. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really had to fight the urge to do that. I actually cut one section because it was like eight minutes long, and I had to cut it down to two and a half in the middle just so that it wouldn't be a 45-minute <laughs> <laughs> video. <laughs> At that point, it's like, this is the final Pan America video the internet will ever need. <laughs> That's it. I had the final word. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no more videos required. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, we didn't mention in the beginning, but these two are giveaway bikes. So if you've made it to the end of the video and you're that committed to the Yammy Noob channel, definitely hit the links down below to yammynoob.co. Join the Discord and you can simp about your own motorcycle and then I have to reply to you. <laughs> you can at me on the Ask Yam channel being like, my bike's the greatest and I'll have to pat you on the head. I'll be like, yeah, it is. Give you a little react or something. Yes, you have, you have to simp for their motorcycles. That's part of the unwritten contract. Yeah. It's the, it's the grave I dug myself, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but yeah, K6 Jigster Squids, Triumph Squids. What, what do you, okay, let's, let's do this. Let's have fun on the end of this episode. All right. <laughs> Which contingency of motorcyclist do you think is the most annoying simp? Oh, man. I could go I could go on and on and on <laughs> about this one because everybody's the most annoying simp in their own right. Yes. You know? It's that's kind of a cop out answer, but everybody is. Uh, I think if I had to actually get real though, it would probably be uh, it'd probably be like the Kawasaki 650 folks, because I, I honestly, I do believe that those folks just haven't experienced other rides. Yeah, it, it has to be, right? Like, there's no there's no way that you have ridden a Ninja 650 and all these other motorcycles, and you still think the Ninja 650 is, like, awesome and great, because it's, it's just not. <laughs> it's just not, uh, guys. Yeah, the it's, amount of butthurt Ninja people now. It's the back half of the video. Nobody watches it. It's okay. We can say whatever we want. Anyways, KTM people, I think they're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, no, and I they, say that as a as a guy with a KTM and a Husky, we're literally the worst. Yeah, the, the the KTM. You get a KTM person talking about whatever they're gonna do. They're they're gonna talk about their Rottweiler parts. They're gonna talk yep. about how much character their engine has. They're gonna bitch about the freaking bill at the uh, at the dealership. They're gonna give you everything, the full experience, all yeah. the stages of coping in one giant monologue. And somehow, Husqvarna people are worse. <laughs> I swear to God, dude, Husqvarna people, like, all we, like, if you let us talk about a bike, we'll be like, oh my God, it's so lightweight, and it could do anything, and it's so great. Oh my God, it's amazing. It's like, yeah, you paid like $16,000 for a dual sport. It better be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think they're the worst. Um, I feel like the least worst, honestly, like unironically, are Jigster Squids. Because I think the Jigster Squids just like know what they got and they don't honestly really say much about it. They're just out on the highways doing pulls at midnight, not really bothering anybody, you know? Yeah, because they just, they, they understand it's, they, they're the ultimate embodiment of the two Chads meme. Yep. Yeah, I feel like Suzuki people in general, like, if you ride a Jixxer 250 or a DRZ 400 or a Hayabusa, people can make fun of you and you're just like, we know. And that's it. But folks, what do you think about simping for your motorcycle? Let us know down in the comments. Do we get it all wrong? As always, uh, thanks so much for watching. We had a lot of fun making this one as we're getting back to the shop to wrap up this actual full production comparison video. If you haven't seen that one, go back in the catalog and check out our full comparison between the Speed Triple and the K6. Lots to say about it in a much more clean and uh, polished manner as we normally do. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Well, look at you. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know. Maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well, too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. 
keep watching Amy Noob.